Well, this afternoon, you may call it a palace coup, but Joy News has obtained exclusive details on the reasons behind the change in the leadership of the minority group uh, in parliament. Kisela Tofosan taking over from Harana Idrisu as the new minority leader. The details contained in a letter signed by the General Secretary, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, uh, has been giving us a sense of what transpired uh, before the NDC uh, is now making its changes. Uh, let's get you some details uh, from that letter as we have it uh, on the screens right now. Uh, it's a letter and that the, um, of course, signatory of the General Secretary of the NDC, uh, Fifi Fiavi Kwete. It's uh, quite a brief one indicating that the national leadership of the National Democratic Congress wishes to formally bring to your notice following uh, the changes in the party has undertaken in its parliamentary leadership. So in terms of the new minority leadership, the minority leader will now be Dr. Kesela Tofosin, who's taking over from Harun Idrisu as the new uh, leader of the minority side in parliament. The deputy minority leader will now be Honorable Kofi Ama Boa, uh, who's replacing James Kluche Aveji as the deputy minority leader. Uh, but in terms of the chief whips, uh, the uh, unique situation here, Ahmed Ibrahim is being uh, retained as the first deputy whip. Uh, Alaji Muntaka Mubarak is being kicked out from that post. He's been replaced by an MP from the Volta region called Kwame governs Agboja. He will now serve as the minority whip in parliament. The second, uh, the, the second deputy whip position is being retained. It's still going to the woman involved here, uh, Comfort Doyo Ganza, who will still uh, be at post. So the NDC is indicating to the speaker that a new leadership uh, will, would be uh, charged to, um, would actually be changed um, I'm not, the, 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 it's not really clear there. I guess the, the word is changed to uh, recommend some consequential changes uh, in, in the ranking uh, membership of, of the headquarters of the party for approval. I, it's not too clear looking at what we have on the screens right now. Uh, but of course, uh, that letter has been signed by Fifi Fiaviquete, who happens to be the general secretary of the uh, NDC. So you have the, the clear picture there now of what the new leadership of the NDC is looking like. Uh, the, the picture of the minority leader, uh, Dr. Kesel Atoforsen, who uh, is now going to serve as the new leader of the minority side in parliament. There's also the deputy minority leader, Honorable Kofi Amaboa, uh, there on your screens uh, together with the leadership of the NDC. Uh, well, what you have now is, uh, of course, a lot of reactions coming through from uh, some MPs and some posts on Facebook, uh, persons reacting to this latest announcement. Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed, uh, one of the uh, MPs in parliament indicates that someone should tell me, uh, some of the national executives, that they cannot choose our parliamentary leadership without consulting the caucus. It's part of the reasons for which uh, uh, Ibrahim Mutala Mohammed has gone onto Facebook uh, to comment about this. Uh, we do know that uh, some other MPs have been reacting to this news. Parliamentary correspondent Kweku Asante is travelling with some of these MPs, joins us via Zoom right now. Kweku, uh, I want to bring you on board because uh, I'm sure that first when the decision was made public, a lot of these MPs did not know about it. Um, any idea what might have prompted these changes uh, as you're hearing from the grapevines? So some of these MPs learned, they learned about the decision from me. We have just completed one tour of uh, the Agenda 111 hospitals here in the Ashanti region. We're just about to get into a convoy to move to other sites that we have envisaged to visit. That, that information got to me. So I quickly went to some of the NDC MPs that I was with to tell them that this is the leadership changes that your party has made. And they were surprised. You could see the shock drawn on their face. The understanding is that some of them saw this coming, but they didn't know it was going to take this effect. The reasons that we are picking, the sources, what they are telling us, is that there has been some deep mistrust of Harun Idrisu's leadership over some time now. Of course, those persons who have alluded to this mistrust have not provided any evidence to back any claim that Honorable Harun Idrisu is in bed with the NPP or is he doing business with the majority caucus. You will recall that in 2021, the party's communications officer, Sami Jemfi, made a long post on Facebook, particularly singling out Harun Idrisu and Moon Takawa Barak, 
as well as the Speaker of Parliament for criticism, accusing them of disregarding the party's directive on some of the appointments that mm. President Ekufuado had made, which the appointment committee had approved. And right. so from then, there had been some mistrust, even from within Parliament and without a leadership like someone like Sami Jemfi and all others who think that Harun Idrisu and Muntakamubara cannot be trusted because they do not do the bidding of the party, they do not conform to the directives of the party. There is that angle. And recently, you know about the VAT that was passed, even some NDC MPs on the back bench thought that their party leadership could put up a more spirited defense to reject the 2.5% VAT increase. It ended up passing through. So coming over the last few years, particularly the last two years of Harry Reduce's first time as minority leader, was rocked with these controversies about whether or not he can be trusted or not. Even a former MP, Ras Mubarak, had gone on to Facebook and made similar allegations against the leadership in parliament. So that is the first leg, the argument about mistrust of the leadership. The second one has to do with the parties thinking that going into 2024 election is going to be about finance. And who better to lead your front in parliament than Dr. Kesela Tofote, okay. who is currently... So the right. ranking member on the final So, so now let, let's talk about the MPs and the reactions you've been getting. What have they been telling you? So the reaction has been mixed. There's the first reaction from people like Honorable Mutala Mohammed who say that this is a no-no. We do not want the party leadership to be taking this decision for us. We want to take decisions on our own. The party leadership cannot sit at the bracket and decide to do this without consulting us. That is the first angle. There are those who are also saying that well, even if you're going to make those changes, why not allow those of us in Parliament to make the decision ourselves and vote and decide whether or not one case like two mm. want to retain her registry or to make some kind of challenges. So it is divided in the middle, with some saying that this is merited, that we cannot trust the leadership of her registry and Mutaka and co, and so we need to change them. And there are those who say that, well, even if you wanted to change them, then we, those in the caucus, have to be the ones making that change. Okay. It? Uh, grateful. Quick question to uh, there. Uh, let's uh, go to Harina Idrisu's um, constituency in Tamale, uh, obviously uh, where a lot of sentiments are uh, being shared on this latest decision by the NDC to make some changes in uh, Parliament with regard to their minority leadership. Martina Bugri is there for us. Martina, I I'm just wondering what the feeling is like now in, in his constituency. Martina, if you can hear me, I'm just wondering what the reactions have been. Now, the people of uh, Tamale South who are supporting the NDC and Mr. Harun Idrisu are upset about the decision by the party to replace him. Um, most of them said they heard the news this afternoon around 12. Some said they, heard it, they saw it through social media. But they were waiting to see what uh, the, their leaders would say. And just after prayers, the Tamale South Party chairman came to the party office. And then the youth began trooping in. The numbers began swelling. Now they are upset because they think that Mr. Harun Egrishu's influence in the party is beyond just Tamale South. They think that he goes beyond Tamale South. He influences Tamale at this whole and even up to the national level. And so they believe that this decision is bringing great division in the party and that can affect their chances in the 2024 election. They said they will not accept this decision and they expect the leadership to take a second look at it or they will face their wrath. Now they are threatening the party chairman and the general secretary not to step foot into their constituency again if this decision stands. Uh, is there likely to be a press conference in the, in the next few minutes on that? Martina, if you can hear me, I'm asking if there will be a press briefing by the chairperson of the constituency any moment from now. Yes, um, the party chairman spoke to, to me a while ago, and he says that those are some of the things I have cut off. He says that they will not agree as a party for Mr. Idrisu to be taken off just like that. It says that this is the first time it's happening in the party. Others have served their turn. Then why is he not allowed to serve the turn? And they pin it to the party secretary and the chairman as being the architect of this. 
and they think that it is paying back Haruna. But they say, say that this is going to affect the party and the fortunes of the party in the region. Uh, Martina Bogri monitoring events for us uh, in the constituency of the minority leader. But the big picture, what's likely to be the implication for the NDC going into the 2024 elections? A crucial one, of course, we'll get you all the analysis uh, of the reshuffle. Uh, but first, uh, there's a need for us uh, to hear from the chairperson of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asiru Nkita, well, that, the chairman of the party, uh, is this afternoon explaining to me in an exclusive interview why that decision has been taken. Uh, we have seen some reports on mainstream media and on social media uh, giving us an indication that the National Democratic Congress, as a political party, has reached to the Speaker of Parliament to make some changes in your leadership in terms of Parliament. What is the true story from the perspective of the leadership of the NDC? Thank you very much. Uh, it is true. Um, we've issued a letter from headquarters signed by the General Secretary, the new General Secretary, Honorable Fifi Fiavi Kote, communicating formally to Mr. Speaker changes that uh, we have made in our front line in Parliament. That is indeed true. And uh, the new changes will bring on board Dr. Kesela to force in as the new minority leader, um, Honorable Ama Kufibwa as the new deputy minority leader, and um, Honorable Governance Kwame Abuja as the new chief whip. And then uh, we maintain Honorable Doyo Ganza and Honorable Ahmed Ibrahim. So this make up the new list of uh, leadership in parliament. There's the obvious question as to why the NDC is taking the decision now. Well, there are two questions. Why we are taking the decision and why now? And I guess uh, the answer is the same. We started reorganization of our structures to be able to position ourselves to fight election 2024. We started that more than a year ago. We started at the um, branch level. We've since done elections in about 40,000 branches. And then from there, we proceeded to constituency level We've done largely with all the constituencies, and then we've done regional elections, and uh, we just completed the national elections. So the next in line is uh, to take a look at our leadership in parliament, and that is what we've just done. So uh, in terms of timing, it is in line with the way we um, are prosecuting the national reorganization. And in terms of why, it means, uh, what it tells you is that uh, uh, the only constant thing in nature is change. And so since the environment is changing, uh, leadership and many other things must change along the new uh, environment. We know, for instance, that uh, Going into election 2024, the economy is going to be the major battleground. And so many of the debates and um, other discussions will focus on the economy. So you better put your best man in the economy forward. And that is what we've, we've done. And then we also looked at uh, energy. You know, this uh, petroleum and electricity challenges and so we needed to settle on Kofi Amabua, uh, our uh, former minister, to be um, um, the deputy minority leader. And then the other area is infrastructure. And uh, Kwame Oboja being an, uh, um, uh, the, our man in infrastructure should play a key role. So that generally is what informed the changes. But there are other things that are coincidental. You take the leadership of parliament, we are bound to 
organize ourselves in such a way that uh, by and large we provide for regional balance and other balances in our ways of doing things. And so since it is very difficult to uh, get representation of 16 regions in five appointments, you need to um, do a lot of mathematics. And um, our view is that the balance cannot be secured with only one segment of the party. So the elections have turned out certain leaders. We already have other leaders that are already existing. And then also, if you are doing appointments, we take all this as a whole to try and see how we can uh, get a fair balance. Um, when you look at uh, um, Western region, it's one region that has not been represented on the, on the front bench for a long while. I remember um, um, when we were in 92, there about, 93, there about that uh, we put uh, somebody on the front bench for a while and that, that ended it. So um, it's a significant region that we need to look at. So when we got the combination of Kofi Amabua from Western region and he uh, being also very conversant with the energy sector, we thought that it was a good choice, so we put him there. Um, central region is the same. As for central region, I think we have there too for a long while. We haven't gotten a leader there from from that time since the time of I think Amabenyuado also. We have since not gotten anybody from there. And so we felt there was a need to do this type of spread. And then when you look at the two regions that give us the highest number of MPs, Greater Accra and the Volta region, they definitely have to be represented. So you have um, Doyo retained, and then you have uh, Kwame Aboja also being appointed. One will ask why, because we have uh, Dr. Veji as, as a deputy minority leader then. Um, Dr. Veji has just informed us that he's not contesting elections again. But the good thing about this leadership is that it adds something to uh, you know, your weight <laughs> so that apart from your own constituency, you can also reach out to, to help other constituencies. And so if uh, you have an MP who is no longer contesting, we, we felt that uh, it would be better to put an MP who will be contesting so he can reach out to other constituencies and, 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 and support. And so but a point that we need to make is that the change has nothing to do with um, the performance of the leaders at all. Um, what it has a lot to do about is that the environment is changing. And so if you are a football coach and um, the, the, the team you are facing and the game style they are adopting is not in keeping with the players you have put out there, you do yourself a lot of good. I was just about going to that point because uh, the description in the media mm -hmm. is that there is a revolt in the NDC, a reason for which you're changing the first two men at the forefront in, in Parliament. Have you spoken to these gentlemen involved mm -hmm. and uh, do you have their blessings? Yes, um, we, we sent a senior person in the party to engage them and let them know that uh, this is the way we are going to uh, handle it. Naturally, it will not be a pleasant news, but at least you need to give them the respect. So we, we communicated to them before writing the letters to them. And apart from the letter we have written to Mr. Speaker, each of them has been written a special letter uh, acknowledging their contributions whilst they were in the leadership and then thanking them and assuring them that the change has nothing to do with their competence or otherwise, 
but it has everything to do with the changing times and the changing field. And so um, that, that's about it. General, you are one of the longest serving party officers of the NDC. Some say we've never seen this in the history of the NDC and that it is not strategic for you to take this decision uh, with less than two years to the general next general elections. What would you to say to someone who, who would term this decision or this new appointment as not being strategic enough for the NDC? I don't know what is not strategic about this. Uh, you say you haven't seen it in NDC. You haven't seen uh, 2022 in NDC or 2023 in NDC before. This is the only 2023 that you are seeing. <laughs> and so it comes with its uh, challenges. I have indicated to you the chronicle of, uh, you know, reorganization events from branch to this level. And this is the best time to proceed. And so that is what we have done. But uh, opinions li are like panties, <laughs> anybody has theirs. So I guess people are free to hold their opinions. So let's explore one of such opinions, Compa comparing Haruna Idrisu and your new minority leader, Dr. Kizela Tofosen. Many believe that in terms of the weight, the charisma and the following they have, uh, you would want to choose Haruna over Kizela Tofosen, for instance? I have indicated to you why we are choosing Kesela at two thousand, and I don't think that there's the need to rehash. And uh, there is, uh, there shouldn't be any reason to compare them. We are comparing them on what basis? One is a finance expert; the other is a, a consummate lawyer. So, are you going to compare them uh, in the legal field or finance field or what? They are different people, so they cannot be compared. How about Muntaka? He's someone who's credited uh, for giving you a good chance in Parliament to control the House. Uh, you, you recall what happened? You were there yourself in the chamber when he captured that sacred ballot for the NDC. Many say you're not rewarding him enough uh, by this very decision to take him off. That was the need for that time. And he, as a leader, proved equal to the tax. There are different sets of needs now, and different sets of talent must come on board. So that's all. Let's look forward to 2024. The NDC wants to recapture power. Uh, the MPP says they are breaking the eight. Given this new set of changes that you're doing, uh, and a number of reorganization processes that may uh, come up in the coming days, are you certain that the NDC is on course for victory? That is why uh, I, I indicated to you the reason for these changes. We are saying that the debate is going to be on the economy. And so we put our best economic foot forward. And, and so it tells you that we are doing this thing with an eye on victory in 2024. So everything we are doing is towards 2024. If um, the nation is worried about the economic circumstances. They will take a decision to change if somebody is able to offer them hope in a better um, uh, government that will uh, produce a better economy. And so you 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 will be um, remiss if you don't demonstrate to the electorate what alternative you have by way of the urgent need to fix the economy. And so you can only do that when you put your best economies forward. And to tell you what, releasing a two forcing from the ranking membership of finance will also unearth, uh, you know, Honorable Adongo. So you have two key fighters in parliament. One is fighting as a leader, the other is fighting as a ranking Person. And I think that when their powers combine, it's only Captain Planet who can challenge them. <laughs> and I recall that when you were elected yourself, <laughs> some were comparing you to the other side, which is the NPP side. Uh, that would equally be done for your new leadership in Parliament. Looking at your good friend, Osei uh, Chairman Sabunso and Alex Afanyumakin leading the NPP side, are you certain that your new leadership can do justice? <laughs> well, I'm not going to... Uh assess the performance of my opponents. I want to believe that our set of leadership will be able to uh, 
match them very well and even overtake them. And so that is our belief and that is why we've made the change. General, I'll take your word to the grassroots of the party, but even before I, I do that, uh, some of the MPs we've spoken to say they've not been, quote, consulted uh, before the announcement. Are you communicating that to them officially so that they respect the new set of names that you have put across? And what will be the next steps in Parliament as you expect it to be? That will be done when they come back. We will be meeting them. You know, there is uh, the type of consultation that happens immediately after winning elections when nobody is in position and you are setting up that one, the nature of consultation is different. When you have people in positions and uh, you are considering their remover, the nature of consultation is also different. Um, and so um, the nature of consultation in a reshuffle of pending a reshuffle is different from the type of consultation you have when there is no minister at all and you are going to uh, consider candidates for ministerial so appointment. So we'll be meeting them. Your, your final word to grassroots of the NDC who are seeing these new changes coming, what would that represent? My word to them is that, um, um, as I indicated in my maiden address, that we are going to engage in total deployment of the human resource of the party so that everybody will have something to do getting into 2024 elections. Look at your talent and put you where you will be most impactful in the campaign. So even those who are being uh, uh, taken off parliamentary leadership, they will surely find very important roles where their sets of talents will come to play so that together we can move the party uh, to victory 2024. So that's the position of the NDC as to why this new change is taking place. I want to bring in now Executive Director uh, for the Parliamentary Network Africa, Sami Obeng. Sami, thank you for joining us uh, here on the polls. Uh, and uh, also, uh, Cletus uh, Avoka is, was one time uh, a leading figure in Parliament, one time uh, served in the leadership of the NDC in Parliament. And so let's start off with you, uh, Mr Avoka. Thank you for joining us here on the polls. Um, I'm just wondering how this news is coming to you, knowing uh, that there'll be a, a new set of leadership for the minority in Parliament j just when you are uh, less than two years away from uh, general elections. Part of this program. Um, it was barely an hour or two hours ago that my attention was drawn to this news publication on social media that the leadership of Parliament of the NDC had been changed. I received the news with a, a big surprise and a dismay because it was not anticipated, it was not expected, and it is untimely un, un, as of now. Uh, without prejudice, the gentlemen uh, who, are, who are now in the hand of affairs or supposed to be in the hand of affairs, that is uh, Ato Hazel and then Hazel and then the Abuja and then the Manuel Boa, our gentlemen, are very decent members of parliament. Without prejudice to that, I, I think that uh, I don't know what informed the national executive of the NDC to do this. Without an iota of consultation with some of us who are seniors in parliament and in the party. And then uh, I don't think that there has been any, any uh, activity in parliament. We have been on recess for, for uh, Christmas and, this, and, the, and then the new year. And I don't, do, I don't know what has motivated them or what yeah. has, uh, uh, has, has brought about this type of change. Well, I, I was just yes, speaking the to the national chairperson. I was just speaking to the national chairperson of the NDC a couple uh -huh. of minutes ago. He says that times are changing. At one time, you were in the leadership uh, for the NDC. It's no longer the case. The tables have turned now, right? Yes. I was, I was a majority leader, yes, some time ago. Mm. That was uh, 2010 to 2013. I was the leader. But I had come to the end of my chain of office. I, I was leader up to the uh, December 2012 election. And then after the elections, that we had to form a new cabinet, new uh, ministers, and then new leadership in parliament and the rest of them. So that, that was a, a termination period that one could understand. But this one, that we are preparing ourselves 
for NDC will be having primaries in May, uh, 13th of May this year, uh, uh, five months or four months away, we will be having primaries. Uh, those that are moving today uh, might be having uh, to contest primaries in their constituency. And then uh, uh, it, uh, I don't know what message we are sending to those constituencies about them. Uh, uh, we are going to jeopardize them. And uh, I think that uh, Haruna has been very, uh, very affable as a leader of the minority in parliament. He's very smart, he's quick in thinking, he's quick on his feet and his brave. And he's very humble, accessible to everybody. Uh, Muntaka has been very combative and then has fought for the party and then the caucus all these years. And I thought that the, 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 the change of leadership, without prejudice to the, uh, the new people who are coming in, is, un is untimely and it's unfortunate. Uh, what's likely to be the impact on your political party? Uh, because at the moment, we, we, our focus should have been uh, a hard point on the MPP who are in government, a collective effort against the MPP for the next two years so that we can have the election. Now, we are going to bring about low morale in parliament. The new people are going to start to learn to how to provide leadership, both for their caucus members and for the outside world. And that will take another time, and that will be a slow process. That will retard the progress of the NDC in their, in their quest to wrest the power from the MPP in December 2024. This is most ill time, and uh, it's unstrategic. And then the, it, it, it didn't need to come at this time at all. We just needed the effort of everybody. We needed to motivate everybody to be able to fight for December 2020 election. And then after that, you can make a change. Uh, change is uh, inevitable. Mm. You can't be there forever. But timing is important. And I think that the current timing by the national executive is not is misplaced. It's not the best. Uh, at least you'd have that opportunity to lay your concerns before leadership yes, of the, of, of, of the NDC. Too. The indication we're getting is that there'll be a meeting um, to address some of these issues. What, what would you recommend that um, the, the new group do, or some we, of you, some I, of the I leading, will, influential will, figures within the party do? I would recommend that the national executive withdraw the letter of change of leadership, mm. and then I'll urge those new leaders to also step down honorably and say that, look, uh, have regard to the interest of the caucus and the party and the country at large, we think that uh, this is not the appropriate time. We, we, we appreciate your confidence in us, but we hope that uh, 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 if the old people continue, we can take over in the near future. I, I think that both from the national executive, they should take a humble, eat a humble pie and withdraw the, the, the change. And then those they have appointed now, we should also say that out of magnanimity, we think that it's, uh, not the, the, the time is not the best. And, uh, and then therefore, we, 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 we close those ranks and continue to forge ahead for December 2024 election. They are, they are correct. They are fine people. I know them. They've been in part for some time. But the timing is still time. Mm. And the, those they are replacing, I don't know the justification for that. I just don't know the justification. And they didn't take many other factors into consideration. Mm. Uh, are you, uh, but, but, that, that, that notwithstanding, that, that notwithstanding, are you willing to work with this new crop of leadership? Oh, we have to meet and discuss before. I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. Yes, they are, they are genuine members of the party. They are honorable members of the party and, lead, and uh, I respect them as such. But I'm saying that this is not the time for change of leadership. This is not the time. For change of leadership. Uh, are, you, are you willing to work with this new crop of leadership? Uh, I, I, I don't guess want to be pushed to the world to say I'm willing or not. I'm mm -hmm. a party member and I'm bound by party principles and party rules. But I'm saying that in the best interest of the party and then have regard to the election we are going to have, mm -hmm. this is not the time for change of leadership. All right then. Uh, we'll see how that will pan out. Kletus Avoka, thank you for joining us here on The Pulse, one time a leader in parliament. Uh, let's bring in Sami Obing, uh, Executive Director for the Parliamentary Network Africa. Sami, uh, so here we are, we're looking at the next steps. Uh, we've not seen this in a long time, so there are a lot of people who are not aware of what the procedure will be. We have leading uh, members of the NDC writing to the Speaker of Parliament, asking uh, for some change in the minority leadership. Uh, educate us on the processes that will follow thereafter. Well, blessed, um, you have just spoken to um, a former leader of 
um, the NDC group in, in Parliament. Uh, he has expressed a lot of interesting um, sentiments. You have um, aired some views of sitting members of Parliament on the decision that had been taken. Mm -hmm. The NDC currently is led by a chairman who is who has been a member of Parliament before, uh, has served in Parliament, a, a general secretary as uh, head of administration of the party, who has also served as member of Parliament uh, uh, before. And, And so chairman particularly uh, serves also on the parliamentary service board. That's right. Uh, another interesting angle which um, uh, to be brought on board. All these put together shows that, you know, these are not uh, novices when it comes to how parliament works, parliamentary practices and procedures, uh, you know, and how sometimes, uh, you know, uh, general strategy can play a very major role in whether you are successful in parliamentary work or not. Having said that, um, I am particularly surprised to have heard this in the news um, as a letter written to the Speaker of Parliament. Of course, Parliament is on recess. Uh, we expect them to be back sometime in the early days of the month of February. Um, and without members of the caucus knowing about it, it is all over in the media. Uh, senior members of the caucus are not aware. I honestly would want to pay attention to what uh, Parliament, when it sits in plenary, would want to say about this and the process that they would want to take it through. But I think that this could have been done differently, even if there was the need for the change. Uh, so you feel there may be a unique situation here. I'm asking about the next processes uh, because I, I wanted to know if indeed uh, the caucus has any power at all to reverse what's been done by leadership of the party. Do, do they have, I mean, some of these powers? Well, you see, we have run our parliament in such a way that party has a very major influence on what happens in parliament. And because of that, you can see some of these things happening with party leadership thinking that, well, we can put this out because it is just, and you see the chairman use the word reshuffle, and during reshuffle times, you know, the process is different from when there is no leadership, yali, yali, yali. Forgetting about the fact that this is going to be leadership who will be leading a caucus of 136, you know, members as we currently have, you know, it, which means that buy-in becomes very, very critical. All I'm saying is that whereas it may not necessarily be flouting any laid down rule of not having this being proposed directly by the caucus, it has grave implications on the party in parliament if not handled properly. Yeah, but, but what then is the big deal? Uh, of course, Haruna himself should have expected that at some point he will be leaving that post. It's not a store he's going to be minority leader forever, is it? Well, the NDC party uh, knows their plans for, you know, amassing as many seats as possible from the 2024 elections. They know the unique nature of this current parliament and the huge expectation on their shoulders that Ghanaians have placed because we expect that the minority in parliament will be able to play the oversight. They know the weight of the majority leadership in parliament that they will have to come uh, face up with. And so as a party, they are at liberty to be able to play in whichever strategy that they want to play. However, all of this must be subject to whether it will help them deliver the mandates that they have to play as minority. Let me give you a typical example. Of a party caucus in parliament has the responsibility, a chief whip of a party caucus in parliament, has the responsibility of mobilizing Sami, are you there? Or to yeah. control their... Uh, we, we, lost you, we, yeah, we, we, we lost you briefly on the point you're making, if you just take that again for us. So I was saying that a chief whip mm -hmm. in parliament you know, has the responsibility of mobilizing his or her ranks. One that can be able to galvanize the team, one that be, can be able to whip them in line, one that can be able to lead them. In fact, in parliament, they jokingly refer to their whips as MP class prefects, you know, which shows the, 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 the weight of responsibility lying on the whip. I heard the party chairman say that, you know, they needed somebody who has uh, uh, gravitas in infrastructure 
because mm -hmm. infrastructure becomes a, an issue of huge debate, you know, for the next elections. You know, what has infrastructure debates gotten to do with whipping up your party ranks and files in parliament to be able to do the bidding that you want? And so some of these things, you know, uh, um, comes to uh, speak to the rationale and the reasoning behind these changes. And like I said, for me, the biggest issue is to hear many members of the caucus say, we did not know about this, we have not been consulted, yet these five leaders, of course, three new ones, two existing mm -hmm. ones, are expected to work with these caucus members to deliver on the mandate in parliament. How do you mobilize, lead, galvanize, bring along a group of people who may perhaps not believe in you, who do not have a buy-in in your selection to be able to administer. And remember that the NPP majority in parliament is indeed, especially their front 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 bed, is really a formidable force, you know, in a majority leader who has so much experience, mm. you know. And so all of these things come to play. And for me, I just hope that the party will be able to, I, I just hope that the party um, will have exercised some level of, uh, 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 um, maybe restraint or perhaps uh, consultation before these decisions were right. taken. I, I really doubt what the rush was, especially mm. considering that the House is not coming back until about two weeks from okay, now. Okay, then. Uh, Samir, being just hold on for us, um, this conversation is a long one. It's just starting. I also want to bring in Inusa Fuseni, who was there in Parliament, worked closely with Harun Idrisu, and now his learning of this new decision. Uh, thank you, Honorable, for your time here on The Pulse. Um, I'm sure that you're not too elated by this uh, decision of the leadership of the party, are you? Well, I, I will say that, well, I was a bit surprised by the decision of the leadership of the party. But clearly, uh, it's a decision of the party, and so I, I respect that decision. What's the likely implication? Uh, and, and I was just asking Claire to Savoka a while ago about the implication. He says that it's dire. Uh, you are going into a major election. You should be focusing on your common, uh, quote unquote, enemy, which is the NPP going forward into the uh, 2024 elections. And now you'd have to deal with the internal rancor. Do, do you see that playing out in Parliament as well? Uh, 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 if the, if Claire to Savoka said that, then I beg to this differ. In fact, and also to differ with uh, Sami, Sami has been uh, working with Parliament for for some time now, mm. and uh, he will not be able to tell me at any point that the minority members of uh, leadership of Parliament or the majority leadership of Parliament were selected by the members of Parliament or in the selection process those members consulted. That's a critical point you're raising because uh, in the debate now, there's the question as, as to consultation, why they've not been consulted, at least why the national executives did not reach out to a few of them. I have been in parliament long enough to say on authority that when we won election, I went to parliament in 20, 2006, 2006. So I met the current speaker doing his second term as the minority leader. I was there when we won election 2009. And tell me at the front bench who, which members of parliament were consulted before the front, front bench of the majority was chosen. Or which members of parliament were consulted before the front bench of the minority then, the MPP, were chosen. I was in parliament when we lost election two, two 16, 2016 and formed the minority in 2017. And Sami Dako, Sami no minority member of parliament was consulted when Haruna Idrusu's team was made the, I mean, were chosen as leadership of the minority in parliament. Now, I have also looked at the NDC constitution, and I don't see any provision that requires that the leadership of the party in choosing leadership of the party in parliament has to consult 
the members of parliament. So, I have so, also looked yeah. at the standing orders. Mm. The standing orders do not say that the members of parliament on each, either side of the house has to choose their leaders. The standing orders does not say Okay, yes. Yeah, so let's get clarity on that. What, what's the provision of the standing orders then? So, well, the standing order says that the leader of the, of the largest group in parliament, other than the group or party that forms government, is the minority leader. That's what the standing order says. Mm. The leader of the largest group or party in parliament, other than the party that forms government, is the minority leader. Mm. So that leader could be chosen by the party. So then, what, what then happens? We're seeing a letter from the leadership of the NDC. Should the speaker regard that letter? Because we've not, the argument is we've not seen this before. Yes, the, 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 leader, the speaker does not choose the leadership of either part, either uh, I mean, party in parliament. Mm. The speaker has absolutely nothing to do with the selection process of the leadership of parliament. What the speaker does is to recognize that leadership. So, so then to the big question, how prudent is this decision for the NDC? You're a member of the party, you're equally concerned. I believe what the party has done is to strategically reposition the party in parliament for election 2024. They are moving the chips to ensure that the party plays its critical role because the battleground for election 2024, which is about 23 months away will be fought in parliament and they are moving the chips to get the the leadership mm. that in his view can work to meet the legitimate interests aspirations and expectations of the party in parliament okay uh, for those of you who are watching us uh, on Joy News, of course, uh, the news is already out there. There's a change in the minority leadership of the NDC. You're listening to uh, Honorable Inusa Fusseini, work closely with uh, Harun Idrisu. He's a former member of parliament. Uh, Honorable, we'll get back to you shortly. Just hold on for us. Sami Oping was uh, on earlier with his perspective on the matter. I want to bring in now also Dr. Uh, Asal Santi, who's a political scientist at the University of Ghana. Uh, Doc, you've been following the conversation. Um, the former MP... Uh, Inusa Fuseni believes that, uh, well, there's no clear rule in what the Lord or the standing orders of Parliament is saying about the leadership. So we just have to abide with this. And what the NDC has done now is to bring a set of strategic leaders that will work towards Victory 2024 of the NDC. Uh, what's your perspective on this? Uh, let me say good afternoon to Mr. Obinga and my good friend, uh, Honorable uh, Inusa Fuseni. Honorable, I salute okay. you. Thank you, right. thank you, Doc. Right. Um, <clears throat> if you look at um, party politics, for me, there's no news. Uh, simple of a cause. Uh, for each political party, the main aim is to win power and form the next government. So they have to position the party in such a way that it is easy for them to achieve this aim. So if by the thinking of the, 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 the leaders of the party, they believe that there's a way to go. Who can follow them? It is to reposition the party. Uh, make sure that you tighten all the news around the party and ensure that the party goes for the care. Okay, listen, listen to the justification by, by the chairperson of the NDC. He says, well, at the times in which we are, economic matters will feature a lot more uh, on the floor of parliament. So we need someone to put our best foot forward. Uh, next is that there's a need for regional balance and also the need to bring in some excluded areas such as the Western region and the Volta region. Are, are these feasible uh, reasons for which, well, you should be trying experimenting now with new leaders when you're just closer to a general elections? 
They are not experimenting. They are not. There are things that the party, decision that they take, you and I who are not close to the party, you may, you know, wish them away. But for them, it's critical. Take, for instance, the issue they're talking about the economy. You can never win an election without looking at the economy. And the parliament is a hotspot for such discussions. So uh, you know that you need somebody who has what it takes to be able to understand economic analysis, economic issues critically, and be able to uh, share the information among his uh, colleagues in parliament, and of course, by extension, give it to the society and all that. So uh, it is a, a one of the best uh, considerations that you take when you are looking at what voter choices and all that. It is important. So you can wish the economic factor away. The regional balance is also critical, that uh, you want the leadership to have a certain, you know, representation that reflect a national character. Uh, because uh, take it or leave it, elections are driven by numbers. And people look at even your composition of your leadership in parliament and decide to give you a vote or to vote against you. Remember that one vote can move a candidate to become what? A president. Can become what? Um, you know, an MP and all that. So numbers count a lot. But if you look at this, apart from this, I have also some perspectives uh, that I want to bring to bear right. on the issue. Right. Uh, one of it is that the party as I see it and where from where I stand, um, or from where I sit, I look at it from this perspective that uh, the party want to make sure that those who are in leadership position are people that uh, they believe that they can deliver uh, the good for them. Why am I saying that? Um, last election, uh, they accused some leaders for having compromised themselves. And that is not to say that any of said leaders mm. have compromised themselves. Right. But if you look at uh, the performance of the party, as being uh, the leadership in part Parliament uh, for at least uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, time. They've done well. Look at Senza uh, bill that they moved. Uh, they did their best, except that they did not get the numbers. Uh, it's a plus for them. If you look at the fact that they were able to galvanize support from even within MPP and get a speaker elected from their party to lead them in Parliament, that's also a plus. If you look at the fact that even Elevi, the first time when he came, uh, they resisted and all that. They've done their bit. And of course, in recent time, as you know, uh, they kick against the budget and the rest of them. That's a feather in their cap. But um, you can also, uh, you know, disagree with them, with the, with the way and manner that they handled the, the, the vote of censure. Uh, people were blaming it on the fact that the number was even number and that nothing meaningful will come out of it. But that I disagree and disagree vehemently in the sense that if you look at the way we began the Fourth Republic, we began with a membership of 230 even number and we move on to, uh, you know, no, we started with 200 and move on to 230. It is the quality of the, the membership that counts. So in spite of that even number, one would have expected that they would have done something, you know, um, that we really appreciate, mm. but events took a different turn and we had right. a report that doesn't give us, uh, you know, the, 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 all the features that we want and all that. Mm. So it creates a problem. If you look at the fact that the leadership came, some of them came out, that they will resist the budget, especially the VAT, uh, that they will not, you know, allow that. But on the day of voting, somebody got missing and all that. Then one would have, you know, expected the leadership to equip them to line. What happened? So some of these things, I'm sure um, the, the party may not take it kindly and may come out. Right. And, uh, and I'm grateful that, that, that you're, that you're raising th that point about compromise. Uh, let's hear from Alaji Yunusa Fuseni. Uh, this continuous perception uh, that Muntaka and uh, Haruna Idrisu appear to be compromised. I mean, you're closer to the MPs. What's the backstory to this? Well, there's no backstory. It is a perception that in some and that perception is when the their actions fail to meet the expectation of the generality of the people of Ghana and some and at times even their own members or colleagues in parliament now uh, once upon a time when we were to vote when parliament was to vote on whether or not uh, the deputy speaker 
can vote, <laughs> there was a walkout. Mm. Some of their colleagues did not support the workout, the walkout. Who engineered the walkout? What was it intended to achieve? Some of the colleagues in Parliament did not know what that work up, uh, what that work up out was intended to achieve. It is that that fuels the perception of a compromise. I have no evidence whatsoever of leadership of the minority during my time in Parliament uh, compromising themselves. But such inconsistent actions lend credence to the fact that the leadership sometimes do not conduct themselves to the expectation of the of their colleagues. Uh, and, and is it your belief, to meet... sorry to cut through, but is it your belief that Haruna Idrisu was not able to successfully demonstrate to his colleagues that, well, I'm not compromised, uh, neither is uh, no, I don't want uh, to narrow, I don't want to narrow mm. this discussion to Haruna Idrisu. Right. I have worked with Haruna Idrusu very closely, even before he got to parliament. I know him so well. Mm. He, indeed, he's my brother. So I don't want to narrow the discussion to yeah, Haruna Yeah, but, but do you feel that these two individuals were not able to demonstrate that commitment, solidarity with their colleagues, a reason for which uh, all of these uh, rumors and perceptions started within rank and file of the NDC? Well, it is not to demonstrate commitment to their colleagues. Members of parliament, when they get elected into parliament, do not work to meet the approval of their colleagues in parliament. Mm. They work to meet the approval of their constituents who have sent them to parliament and the party on whose ticket they stood to get to parliament. So. The assessment regime is larger than you think. Constituents are assessing the performance of the individual MPs and the group in parliament to, to determine whether indeed the, the, the way they are performing their duties is acceptable. And the party itself, once a while, goes to or sends directives to the group in parliament mm. on how in its view it must discharge its duties mm. and so for for members of parliament to say that well or for me to say that a member of parliament work to meet my as aspirations and expectations mm. is neither here nor there because i'm not the final determinant of whether meeting my aspirations will let that member of parliament, if he's in the leadership position, mm. to continue to be in that position. Okay, so, so let's look at the way forward then. What's your expectation uh, from the uh, leadership of the NDC, I mean, by extension, the executives, and also these new leaders? What would you want to see in terms of uh, closing the ranks, trying to solve the potential faults and cracks that may emerge so after this appointment? The first thing that happens after, after a party determining the leadership of, of the party in parliament is for the party to arrange to meet the caucus in parliament. That's the first thing that will happen. So you can be sure between now and 7 February, when the party will be meeting or parliament will be reconvening, the party will have worked to meet the caucus and explain to them why they think there is a need to change leadership in parliament. Mm. I was now, just, the, yeah. the, the leaders themselves are too forcing, mm -hmm. will have an, a, a responsibility, indeed a duty, to ensure that he wins the trust and confidence of his colleagues in parliament, because they are to support him in the performance of his duties as a minority leader. Mm. Emmanuel Kofi Amapua, will have to support, assure uh, parliament, the minority caucus in parliament, and are too forcing that he will support him to the hilt because he is his deputy. As for Abuja, the minority chief which is the fulcrum around which parliamentary business is done. So he has enormous powers. 
He has carrots as well as sticks. He determines where or which member travels, travels to where. He determines which member can absent himself from parliament with permission of the speaker. He determines how members of parliament must vote in the interest of the party. So he has a three-line whip that he can invoke to ensure. And he has sticks. If a member of parliament is recalcitrant enough to disobey the whip, there will be sanctions. Mm. You remember what happened in Boris Johnson's government and the, uh, the, uh, the European Union and Britain, they, I mean, when they were looking for out, exit, breast, breast, yeah. that some of the Conservative Party members voted against Boris Johnson. They lost their seats. That was a sanction. They were equipped to vote for Brexit. And they voted against it. They lost their seats. Mm. Some lost their prime ministerial their ministerial positions. That is the power of the whip, both in the presidential system and the parliamentary system. So I'm sure, I'm sure they are going to. I mean, they are colleagues. Mm. First of all, Atu Folson, uh, Bua, uh, Adaklo, uh, that is uh, Adaklo MP. Yeah, uh, uh, Abuja. Abuja. Mm. Are in, have been elected leaders precisely because they are MPs. That's the first qualification. You must be an MP mm. before you be a minority leader. So they are just like their colleagues. Right. They have been in parliament for some time now. Mm. They have distinguished themselves. Abuja was the ranking member on roads and transport. In fact, he was a deputy chairman when NDC was in power of roads and transport committee. The uh, uh, Bua was the, in the seventh parliament the chairman of the Committee on Trade Indust and Industries. Uh, and he's, he's, he discharged his duties right. wonderfully Right, I, I well. get the point. So they are, they are all MPs. Uh, but then, just to pick up on Alaji Munta Kamubarak, I was asking that same question as Yedwin Kitya uh, about how he sacrificed, and of course he received a lot of commendations uh, from rank and file of the NDC, when he secured the speakership for the NDC. You, you feel that his, he deserves a reward, isn't it? At well, least by re retaining him, just retaining is him where it, he is. Is he being punished? Is he being punished? I, I guess he's being demoted. I don't think, Muntaka, I don't think that Muntaka is being punished. And in this particular case, no one is being punished. The party is just strategically repositioning itself. And that is not punishment. Mm. It's in the collective interest of Muntaka and all the outgoing leaders that NDC wins election 2020. Okay. Uh, Therefore, right. right. That's why I'm saying that they have to subsume their interests under the collective interest of the party. Mm. Mm. It's definitely in their interest that NDC wins power. And so no one is being punished. All right. Uh, it's like strategic realignment of the leadership of the party to the vision of the party, mission of the party for election 2024. Mm. Uh, Alaji Yunusaf Husseini, I'm grateful that you've been able to join us here on The Pulse. I'll give uh, a few minutes each to, um, of course, Sami Obeng and Dr. Asa Asante. Sami, let me start off with you. Haruna Idrisu or Kesela Tofosin, what would you choose? Well, uh, I, I'm not too sure that... Uh... <laughs> yes, Sami. Blessed, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear now. Mm. Yeah, I'm not too sure that it, it, it's really about who, who do I choose. I, unlike Honorable Inusa Fusseini, I am not a member of the NDC party. <laughs> like you rightly indicated, the party <laughs> understands their, their, their players on the field better and knows who to position where. Let me rather state that um, whereas I agree with uh, Honorable Inusa Fusseini when he indicated that nowhere in the standing orders uh, does it preclude you know, the political party uh, necessarily from uh, being the ones putting forward the, the details of their leadership in parliament. I, I completely agree with him 
on on that particular score and i don't think that's from the very beginning i i i i, I look uh, um i um, try to insinuate that the party has no role to play in selecting the leadership uh, uh, in parliament in fact he was right when he quoted the definition of a minority leader in the standing orders which says that the minority leader uh, uh, means the member of parliament designated by the party mm. having the largest numerical strength in parliament other than the party that has formed the government you know and that person is recognized as a minority there so certainly the party has a role the point i was making however was that for a party that has huge loads or for a parliamentary group or caucus that has huge load and expectations of the Ghanaian people on its shoulders it is expected Sami, can you hear me? So that their front will not be uh, 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 broken in Parliament, uh, failing or uh, making them fail to execute their roles and responsibility in Parliament. But hey, you know, it's about a political party that understands its members better. It's about a political party that knows its people in Parliament better. And it's about how they want to position their people. What this all means also is that there's going to be huge changes to the uh, chairperson, ranking members of committees, you know, in parliament, that the party chairman alluded to that when he signaled in your interview with him that it's likely that even finance committee will be led by uh, the honourable Adongo, mm. if I am not mistaken. Yeah, that's um, it. Yes, the, the 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 leadership that is put in various committees would also be as important you know, in this entire process. So for us, as a parliamentary monitoring organization, we are hoping and waiting to see who and who gets to be ranking and deputy ranking on the various committees, how that plays in, but more importantly, to stress and emphasize that when party has a position on a particular subject matter, consensus building, in my opinion, is extremely important mm. to be able to keep the units together in a very important critical parliament, such as this eighth parliament all right then some you're being executive director parliamentary network Afri africa i'm grateful uh, dr sasanti uh, you have some final words on this yes i believe that um this move uh will be nurtured and uh, will blossom to give the kind of fruits that the party requires so that at the end of the day they will be able to uh, be battle ready for 2024 that requires that the leadership should show um, some kind of, um, you know, they should demonstrate that they have what it takes to lead a party by rallying support behind them, by making sure that uh, all, you know, differences are mended, and then they make sure that um, the party's interest is supreme than any other interest. Mm. Any other interest to push to the background and that they are ready uh, to bury their differences, work together as a team, and then take it from where these people are living off. And that is the spirit. I expect that. Nothing more, nothing less. Mm. And I'm grateful, Dr. Asar Sante, political uh, scientist at the University of Ghana. Thank you for joining us. You're watching The Pulse. When we return, we'll talk about uh, the new arrangements for the public sector. The Fair Wages and Salaries Commission has some announcements for you. You might want to listen in on that. It's all coming up here on The Pulse. We're back shortly. Please stay.